everyone, welcome to today's edition of One Single Story, where each weekday we tackle a single relevant question based on our Bible reading for that day. Uh, this week, our reading is centered around the book of James, and today I'm joined by Alyssa Bream and Chris Rexrode. And we're going to look at a question from the book of James, but since this is Monday, let's talk about um, the theme. So the theme of James is a genuine faith. James is the half-brother of Jesus. Um, same mother, different dads. Mm-hmm. Um, to Jewish Christians, uh, he wrote this letter to Jewish Christians scattered throughout the Roman Empire. Um, and he urges his readers to live out their faith practically and tangibly rather than merely giving lip service to their belief. He emphasizes the importance of good works as evidence of true faith, and he challenges his readers to demonstrate their faith through deeds of love and mercy toward others. And our reading today was verses 19 through 26 of chapter 1. And he says, Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters, you must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Human anger does not produce the righteousness God desires. So get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives and humbly accept the word of God is planted in your hearts for it has the power to save souls. So he tells us we're to be slow to get angry and that human anger doesn't produce righteousness in us. Um, so, So I have kind of a two part question today. One, why is anger so dangerous and how do we deal with it? I think anger definitely fogs your judgment. Um, and I mean, it can be very destructive as far as like what it can do to your relationships, especially if you're not slow and you're quick to go to anger. Um, you can damage relationships. You can even go and mess up a job, uh, lose a job, um, lots of different things. And I mean, it'll take a toll on your health as well. Part of the reason why anger is so dangerous is because a lot of times it gets either hidden in our lives where we try to ignore it because it's not an appropriate time or angry at something that we maybe shouldn't be angry at, or it gets misplaced where we're angry at something that went wrong in our jobs, but we know we're not going to take it out on our boss and we take it out on our kid instead or something. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't actually, we don't deal with it in a good way because we're human, we're going to have emotions, we're going to have things, but what is that emotion telling us and what do we need to do to deal with it is where we need to go. And a lot of times anger just gets hidden and misplaced, I think. You you mentioned how that sometimes anger, we're we're mad at somebody else, but somebody else gets the brunt of it. And I I mean, I, I think that's happened to all of us. I can think of numerous times where that's happened for me. Um, Zig Ziglar used to tell a story about this um, boss who went to lunch and he was gone to lunch and he came back in late. And um, when he came back in late, he asked his assistant, had she done something she was supposed to do? And he, and she was mad because he was late. You know, he had taken too long of a lunch. and But he's he's deflecting, you know, and getting on her. And so um, she gets mad and goes down to the secretary pool and chews out the people who are doing support for her. And so they're mad and ever who she's chewing out goes home. And when they get home, their son has um, fallen in a mud puddle and she just chews him out and gives him a beating and, when he walks out of the house, the cat crosses the sidewalk and he hauls off and the kid kicks the cat. And he he says the point of the story is the cat got kicked because the man was late back from lunch, you know, (laughs) and how it becomes this cascading effect of people. Um, I've even seen, um, I hate left-hand drivers. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, I've I've had incidents on the road where I've i gotten so frustrated. Somebody pulled out in front of me. We're doing a riding a, a moving roadblock, you mm-hmm. know, whatever. And um, I and and it affected my attitude such that when I got in an environment with people, 
that I was sharper than I should have been, more uptight than I should have been. Um, I can even think of times probably where I had like frustration with a single staff member that bled out on everybody at some point, you know, and um, I think that's the thing we don't realize is the cascade effect that it, it doesn't, it may not start out as anger. It may just start out as an incident or frustration or in the case of kicking the cat, a deflection, you know, somebody else is blaming us for something and it just ticks us off. Um, are you aware of that when it happens or are you not aware of it when it happens? When you're withholding the anger or when you're dishing it out on somebody When you're dishing else? it out on somebody else. I think I'm more aware of it after I've done it mm -hmm. than when I'm doing it. I think I've become more aware. And most of the time when I hold in emotion and bring it out, it's not like screaming anger, but like I can tell when my patience has been tested at work <laughs> mainly. Um, and then I go home and I'm not patient with my kids. And I, I can realize that. And sometimes I'll, I'll even say to Tyler, I was like, this isn't about you. This is, this was a bad day because of X, Y, Z, you know, don't take anything I say too, too literally right now, you know? Um, and so I think there's times when I realize that I'm sure there's times when I don't. I think that the more you grow, the more you have to realize it, you mm -hmm. know? Um, and I, so one of the reasons why I think anger, and he kind of addresses it here, is so dangerous, is that it removes every filter we have. Mm -hmm. the, the more angry we are, the more the, the less filter we have. In our actions, in our words, all, all of the above, in our emotions, um, our thoughts. Um, and he, he says... You should get rid of the filth and evil in your lives and humbly accept the word of God planted in your hearts, for it has the power to save your souls. He's, he, 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 he's saying that because what happens is when we get angry, we say things we wish we hadn't said. We act in ways we wish we hadn't acted. You know, um, the prison is full of people who had five minutes of anger, mm -hmm. you know, um, Sure, there are lots of premeditated events, you know, that happen, but often it is just horrible responses to a to a bad situation, an unfortunate situation. And um I I <clears throat> you know, the what are what are some ways that we can get rid of the the filth and the evil in our lives so that when we do, when we are angry, all of the unrighteousness doesn't come bubbling out. I think, and this might be partially because right now as we're filming this, we're in 21 days of prayer. People won't be listening to this during 21 days of prayer, but I think um, spending time in the word and in prayer helps refocus us and we're able to lay the problems that we've had in our life and relationships and whatever and tell them to God. And I think that that can help a lot to, to take off that edge of anger that can just drill down into our hearts. I agree with that. And also finding ways to become more aware of it when it's happening. And then also outside of praying about it and talking to God, um, having somebody in your life that's kind of a sounding board that you can go to. I'm a classic overthinker. I think of things that are going on that aren't even going on and, and then 17 other avenues that are into that. And a lot of times if you have that person in your life, you can go and talk to them about what's going on. And usually it'll help kind of like bring that stuff back down um, so that you don't go and make a, a poor decision or a rash decision or just let it harbor in your heart with bitterness. Yeah, I, I I think sounding boards are good. I, here he talks about replacing it with the Word of God, accepting mm -hmm. the Word of God in their heart. I do think prayer and um, fasting um, and and God's Word do help recenter us. Um, 
And I, I just think anger is such a dangerous emotion from the beginning of Scripture. You know, we see um, Cain and Abel. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's a very there's very similar language here in in as in the Cain and Abel story. The Cain and Abel story, he talks about. Um, he's basically instructing Cain to get over it, because if you don't, you'll give a foothold to the devil. Mm-hmm. You know, and and here he's saying very much the same thing. You know that um, if we don't get rid of it, it it it, it just overwhelms us and um you know i one of the things because i have seen this over my life i have seen people who were i don't know what the right word is they were moderately irritated all the time is (laughs) is that is that, that fair they were moderately irritated all the time just sharp um sometimes rude um, many people would call them hateful, you know. Um, and I've seen them take two paths. I've seen as they've gotten older, they've gotten gentler and softer and much more reasonable. But I've seen seen them go the other way, where by the time they were old, they were just mean old people. Like nobody mm-hmm. wanted to be around them. And it was sad to watch. And I've committed myself, because I, I don't think I'm – always mildly irritated, but I can get mad like quick, you know, the older I get, the better I am at that. Uh, not <laughs> you get mad quicker. You, you know, no, no, not, not getting, not getting as mad as quick. Like I am committed to, I don't want to grow, be, I don't want to grow old and be an old grumpy, mad person, you know, mm-hmm. and it can overtake our life. It really can. I mean, I don't know if y'all know people who have gotten old to be old, mad, grumpy people. But um, it, it's not it's not a pretty sight to see. A lot of times, it's very isolated too. Yeah, because you know, people just eventually get tired sure. of it. They don't want to be around you. And that feeds more anger. Mm-hmm. Then, yeah, then they're yep. They think everybody else is against them or bad or mm-hmm. people have forgotten me. You know, for me, another way that I can deal I deal with anger is to try to find some distraction that. Um, diverts my mind, you know, that completely consumes me so that I don't have to think about it. Um, because there are things around that I'm not, I'm not, I don't think I'm an overthinker. I'm a thinker, but I'm not an overthinker. Um, but man, when I, I, I can name a half a dozen times in my life when I've gotten mad that I couldn't shake it. Like I couldn't get it off my mind. I couldn't stop thinking about it. it when I woke up, excuse me, it was what was on my mind. When I went to sleep, it was what was on my mind. Mm-hmm. Do y'all have any other ways? Going for a walk is a good thing for me too, um, to kind of clear my head, divert my attention. Do y'all yeah. have any other practices? No, I think I was going to say about going for a walk because there's – as we build up like the stress hormones in our body, they need somewhere to go. Like if we think that like originally when we, when humans would get stressed and maybe it was like a wild animal was right there and they needed that adrenaline to run and to get away and things like that. And we still have those same responses in our body, but we don't, since it's all mental and we can't run away from it, like mm-hmm. what do we do? And so I think doing something physical, like going for a walk or doing something like that um, really can help get us out of that that tense state and it closes the circle of stress it's from a book and i cannot even think of the book title because yeah but it's it, it it's an important You've been thing up way too long already today right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah um it's an important thing to to deal with those feelings and if it's a feeling in your body then you need to deal with it and walk it out yeah i would agree uh exercise for me is definitely one of them Uh, another one i'll go and i'll work on a project to kind of get my mind off of it and i'm one of those people that whether i mow the yard or finish a project or something i feel completion and it probably kind of offsets that you know whatever chemicals that are in my body that make me feel better about a situation um 
and a variety of other things. Go and do something in one of the hobbies I enjoy. Well, thank you for joining us today on this edition of One Single Story. We hope you'll be back with us tomorrow as we continue a conversation around the book of James. <laughs>